Good morning. Happy Friday. As you can tell, I am not in my office today, either my home office or my regular office. So this um, edition of a successful transition from monogamy to open is being done in my hotel room in Chicago, where I'm here on a speaking engagement. And as I was trying to think about what to talk about today, I thought I've been thinking about self-acceptance because that's here what I'm speaking about. I'm here talking to the Capcom, the Chicago Age Players Convention. And for many people in various areas of the um, sexual, um, alternative sexuality community, uh, self-acceptance is a big issue. And it certainly is an issue when people start getting into open relationships. Um, there's a lot of questions that come up, either from our partner who we're talking to about this and they're not sure they want to do this and they're like, well, why is this even important to you? Why do you need this? I'm perfectly happy with engaging in a relationship the way society taught me I'm supposed to. Um, and people tend to go one of two ways. It's either they want to blame themselves and be like, well, what's wrong with me? Why am I not, am I, how, what's wrong with me that I'm not giving you enough of what you want? Why do you want this other thing? Or they blame the other person. It's that, what's wrong with you? Why don't, why don't you want what I want? Uh, what's wrong with you? And why are you the problem child? And that is often the dynamic that goes back and forth. Or even if a couple are um, in agreement in opening their relationship, um, particularly if their family or other friends find out, now they feel like they have to justify it. Now they feel like they have, because their family are going, what's wrong with you? Why, why are you not um, engaging in a relationship like the rest of us, like we taught you? It's particularly if parents find out, what's, what's wrong with you? Why do you want this weird open relationship thing? Um, and so then it really hits people in their self-acceptance, in accepting themselves for who they are. Um, and in the presentation that I give on self-acceptance, I really talk about the top four um, negative emotions that affect people when they're trying to battle their self-acceptance to keep their self-acceptance strong. Um, and those, what I call the big four. Um, I wrote about it in the book that I wrote a couple of years ago, um, No More Hiding, Permission to Love Your Sexual Self. Um, and I call it the big four because it's the, really the, the four big negative emotions that affect people uh, when they're dealing with any type of alternative uh, sexuality. And that's fear, shame, guilt, and embarrassment. And trust me, I can talk for a whole hour on this and I often do. Uh, so we're not gonna go into great lengths today on it, but I want to at least touch on those four emotions. And maybe next week I'll do a whole week on um, the big four, because I think it is important to understand it and how to deal with those emotions um, and, and what how they interfere with us and how they sometimes very subtly um, get us to believe that there's something wrong with us if we don't comply and become like everyone else. Uh, which I find really interesting when you think about it, that you know the United States is built on this theory that of individualism, rugged individualism, and um, we pride ourselves in being individuals. And yet at the same time, there's so much pressure to be like everyone else, which is contradictory to what we're all brought up with about being Americans and being rugged individualists. So it's very interesting how, yeah, you're supposed to be different and individual, but not too different. That's way too different. So um, I want you to think about over the weekend, I think next week I'll, I'll do more days um, on this and talk each day about the fear, the shame, the guilt, the embarrassment, and then kind of wrap up the week with how they all play together. Because I think it's very important to kind of have a good foundation of what all that means um, when you're thinking about opening your relationship. You're either trying to explain it to your partner or you're trying to explain it to the people in your life around you and you feel like you have to justify this. That eats away at your self-acceptance because then people have a tendency to begin to wonder, well, maybe there is something wrong with me. Maybe maybe I should just go back to monogamy because that's what everybody else does and they seem happy with it. So maybe I should just shut this down and go back to being the way everything else was. And I'll just 
I'll just go through life and, and be that way and oh well. Um, and they don't live their full expression. They don't live their full joy. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that for today. Um, again, if you haven't already joined the private Facebook book group, um, a sex, sex <laughs> can't talk today, <laughs> a successful transition from monogamy to open, um, please go ahead and join and participate in the discussions and have a fabulous weekend. And I will see you all next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.